Hey, everybody. Welcome to our regular Friday get together. What's new and coming up with Lipedema? I'm Leslie Keith with the Lipedema Project. And of course, I'm here with my good friend and colleague, Gail. Hi, Gail. Hello, hello. And we love to hang out with you here on Friday. And um, we love to know that you're here with us. So if you could be so kind to post in uh, the comments, whether you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook, if you can put something in the comments, who you are, where in the world you are. We always like to know what the weather is doing where you, where you are. And as Gail always says, send us some love. We like to get those hearts, yes. <laughs> and of course, Aileen has already uh, put something in there. Is that right? Is that fractal Aileen. beans? Is that Aileen? Elena. Elena, Elena. And she is... Is she the one who's in Puerto Rico? No. She, okay, oh, okay, so Aileen is in Puerto Rico and Elena okay. is in the UK. In the UK. Okay. And so, yeah, you always throw me off because I you have them there, fractal beans and not your name. So sorry about that, Elena. And so wonderful to have you here. And Marsha is here from Texas. And Sandra is oh she's she likes to describe her little um emojis and so she's doing a hand pink waving face red heart shape okay thank you <laughs> and melody is watching um on facebook from michigan Marilee, winterly wintry cold damp day in the pacific northwest and we got a facebook user from salt lake i guess in utah and it's How cold and windy cold. Cold yes. and windy around the um, this area, so I'm sure I'm sure Salt Lake is getting the cold winds as well. Yeah. And yeah. and uh, Utah is very very dry too, so I think Salt Lake is is has really low humidity unless it's in fact raining. So um, stay moisturized. <laughs> What's it doing for you right now in Idaho? Are you pretty cold right now? Um, yeah, we're we're actually having beautiful cold windy days and the nights are rainy and icy. Wow. I, I'm looking out my window right now at snow covered mountains. So wow. the resort opens tonight mm -hmm. for the rest of the season. And I can also, so I'll see the light, the lights because mm -hmm. we, we have night skiing right mm -hmm. there. I mean, we, uh -huh. it is right there. So very nice. Very good. Um, and in Cal Southern California, it's 68 degrees. So, you know, sweater weather. <laughs> That's bathing suit weather. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, and uh, Andrea is in Apache Junction, Arizona, 69 degrees. So she is actually a little bit warmer. Very nice in the sun. Jeannie, uh, Jean um, is from Colorado. Nice to have you here. Um, Juanetta says five inches of snow overnight in Anchorage, 12 degrees Fahrenheit. So thank you guys all for posting. We have a couple of things that we want to share with you today and uh, a couple of announcements. So the first is I wanted to share everybody about our town hall that we're going to be doing. We do this every year at the end of the year, and we it's kind of a, a wrap up and a review. This is everything that we did, everything that you helped us do, everything that was accomplished around Lipedema. And so we're going to be doing that on December 28th at 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, we'll have links and stuff later, but for right now, save the date. You want to be there to join us as we talk about kind of the year end in review. <laughs> um, and we're going to talk about what we're planning for next year based on what you have told us. Gail, what are some things that people want us to work on next year? Right. So, I, you know, we hear one thing after another, after another. And amazingly, all of the stuff that we hear about focuses to pain management. So if what they want to talk about compression, they want to know how does compression help with my pain management? Right. If they talk about MLD, how does it help with the pain management? You know, so everything, everything that we've been hearing all year long is, you know, how do I manage this pain? Yes. And so we're going to focus 2024. Oh my gosh, already 2024. Mm -hmm. We're going to focus on pain management. Mm -hmm. And um, so yeah. it's, it's going to be a... Um, it's going to be a good year. 
I mean, mm -hmm. we had a great year, as crazy as it's been. We've had a really good 2023 so far. Yeah. And we're going to, I mean, there's a lot of exciting things that happened this year. And uh, besides pain, there are other, we have other projects and other things that we really want to work on. And so join us and help us direct us towards maybe your interests and, and some things that you would like um, us to work on in 2028. And don't wait until then. Email us, put stuff in the comments when we're here on the Facebook Live. Um, you know, we're always um, looking to have some kind of contact with the community and, and do what you want us to do. Uh, Julie, my neighbor here in Southern California, it says happy holidays. Gloria is in North Ogden, Utah, and it's a little snowy there. And how close are, is that to Salt Lake? Is that a, like a suburb of Salt Lake? Um, yeah, no, somewhat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's in the, so it's not ways away, but it's just, yeah. you know, it's like, there's like little fingers that go out uh -huh. like Robo and Ogden and to yeah, yeah. Huntington. And all those other I, mean, I, I think of, I think of uh, Utah as Bryce Canyon, Zion, Arches, Canyonland, and Salt Lake. And that's all there is. <laughs> right. Well, now, wait a minute. There's um, Cedar Breaks and there, um, there's Moab and I, oh, yes, there's Park yeah. City. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I know there's a lot more to Utah than I know. Yeah. yeah. Um, so um, yeah, Ogden's about yes. an hour away from the Salt Lake area, okay. 45 miles. Yeah. So it's, 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 is it a suburb? Mm. Not, not really, not that far away. Yeah. Yes. I was going to say, out here, yes. out here in this area, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's like, what is this? What's a suburb of yeah. yes. Las Vegas? Yes. Yeah. Las Vegas. Yeah. It's quite a ways away. That's all I can do. California. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Alexis is in uh, Cincinnati at 60 degrees. Um, Jamie is also in Alaska in the Matsu Valley. So, oh, how nice to have a couple of Alaskans here today. Um, and Melody says, would like to hear more information about the treatments for lipedema with other cohorts like Durkham's. Would like to get rid of the silos. And, and um, so, you know, everybody is in their own little specialty and they don't know what anybody else is doing. And they're also not kind of interested in talking about it. So Melody wants us to... to you know, put all our information together, get together. And um, because it's, you're all in one body that these things are all happening in. Yeah. Okay. Thank and, you, Melody. Uh, and speaking of that, you know, we have the, we, we're talking, we talk about lipedema and then, and, and Catherine brought us and you, but C Catherine was the driving force at first. What is lipedema? How, what is this thing I, de I deal with? What am I dealing with? And how do I take care of it? She yeah. linked up with you and now Catherine's dealing with central lymphatics. And so we've been talking about central lymphatics and, and with not necessarily lipedema, but now we're talking more about the lymph system. And because of that, we're going to have something spectacular coming up in, in um, February. It took me a while to figure out what month. Yes. <laughs> you know, and because, yes. you know, so everything, every question we have, we, it seems to be centered on the lymphatic system. Yes, it is. Yeah, yes. it, it is. So, so um, I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to go back to the banners and let you talk for okay. a minute. Oh, and, and just want to say Michelle is here from Scotland. Great to have you. Um, and so, um, what um, Gail was alluding to is a workshop that we're going to have with Dr. Raymond Perrin from the UK is going to be here in Boston in. Uh, It'll be doing a workshop from February 2 to 5, I think it is. It's it's that first weekend in February. And he is going to be sharing with us this, this, the Perrin technique, um, which is specifically, he developed it to d deal with um, chronic fatigue syndrome because it, it stimulates the neurolymphatics, the lymphatics of the brain and spinal cord. And um, it turns out that the, this... I think will also um, be really beneficial for people who have different lymphatic disorders. And we're looking at the lymphatic component, just as you're saying, Gail, is so involved in just about every condition. 
And so when we're looking at doing this uh, technique, which is really based in the cranial sacral therapy, if anybody is familiar with that, um, th it, it's activating what I see as the lymphatics of the central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord. Um, so I'm, I'm, right now I'm reading a book about cranial sacral therapy in preparation to be able to take the um, Dr. Perrin seminar in February. And they are talking about cerebral spinal fluid, you know, that's around the brain and the spinal cord. Well, that's, that's our lymphatics of our brain and spinal cord. So it's all comes down to, as you say, the lymphatics. So this workshop, it is for clinicians. And if you are seeing a manual lymph drainage therapist or a, uh, a certified lymphatic therapist, tell them about this because it's going to enhance their ability to help their patients. They may want to attend this workshop and space is limited. Dr. Perrin wants to make sure he really trains and certifies um, every therapist who attends. And so he's limiting the number that, that can be there for this workshop and it's filling up fast. So let your therapist know about this, or if you are a therapist watching right now, um, you wanna go to this link, which we'll have also below for you to be able to um, uh, get more information about it. Um, this is, it's a, he comes, he goes around the world to do these trainings and he's not often to the US. So if you are a therapist, <laughs> in the US, this is a unique opportunity and you don't wanna miss it. So um, Boston in first weekend of February and check that out. We've had a couple webinars with Dr. Perrin and um, just there, there's uh, a lot of interest and I do think this is uh, a spectacular treatment that has a lot of potential and I wanna learn more. So I'm pretty excited about it. So, um, and now Aileen is here from Puerto Rico. Nice to have you. And I missed uh, Andrea Hinkle. She says, I'm interested in compression in addition to socks and how to get them to work for me. I have been diagnosed with lymphedema. And so, um, Andrea, I'm wondering if you, um, when you say you wanna know about compression in addition to socks, you wanna know about alternatives to using compression stockings? because I'm thinking about Velcro garments. There's specific um, compression garments that ha have Velcro that some people use them by themselves or some people put them on over their compression stockings. If you could post again, let me see. Um, if you could post again, Andrea, and let me know if that's what you're talking about because we could definitely talk about that. Um, and a Facebook, or, uh, Facebook user says I'm going to get my um, massage license. So as a licensed massage therapist, and so that then you can get certified in MLD. Um, so let me tell you that, um, you, as long as you take the, um, uh, introductory course on cranial sacral therapy, that's what you need in order to attend, uh, parents workshop. So, and that I'm just doing it this weekend. That's where I'm going this weekend to go get that training. And it's a four, I think it's a four or five day course. Um, and it, because he basically wants you to know the, all the structures of the central nervous system so that now you can use these hands-on techniques in order to do his, his uh, technique. So, um, so look into that, look into cranial sacral therapy, take the introductory course, and then you would be set even before you get your massage license. Okay. Um, so the other thing that we were going to talk about, Gail, unless other people bring up other things in the chat, is we're going to talk about those codes, um, diagnosis codes for lipedema. And I, I have to say, first off, that, you know, th these codes are what helps people get coverage for therapy and, um, you know, different services for their lipedema. And the United States is kind of behind the game on this um, because in Europe and especially in Germany, they have very specific codes for lipedema. And we don't have that so much here. Um, we have 
Um, let's see the codes that we are using. Um, the global code for lipedema that we're okay. That's what they're using internationally is EF zero two point two. Um, and we could put that information out there for people, but there are, um, in the U.S., we haven't adopted it yet. Um, I, I'm going to look on my email, too, of what I put on there. Um, so in Europe, they can use that EF 02.2, but in the United States, we're using a code for edema or pain in the leg or pain in the arm or um, localized adiposity. Um, they have one for easy bruising or um, difficulty walking. So these could be all like symptoms of lipedema, but we don't really have a good one that says this is lipedema yet in the US. So like I say, we're kind of behind the time on here. Um, but the most important thing, and I think this is what you always talk about, Gail, is to just get in your chart, get the word in your chart. Talk to people about how you've been doing that. Um, so I'm going to pop this up real um, quick from um, Eileen, Eileen Navarro in um, Puerto Rico. And she wants to know, would the U.S. codes represent Puerto Rico as well? And yes. I'm thinking because it's a U.S. territory, yes. They, it's yes, because it's through the it's these are through the government. Correct. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the yeah. Um, so yeah. how do how do we get um, lipedema in our charts? I I want to know every time I walk into a medical facility, a care facility, for example, if I go to the physical therapist, I want it in my chart that I have lipedema, um, and I would like them to discuss it with me. Uh -huh. When I fill out, you know, when they say, oh, here, update these, update your record, we're going to update your records. And they start, they start asking about this diagnosis or that diagnosis. I always say, is lipedema in my chart? I always ask because I'm finding that it doesn't, one chart does not go completely across everybody that I see. I even have it in my dentist's chart. Well done. I have it in my eye doctor chart. Yes. I have it in my um, physical therapist's chart. They don't. They're not all connected. Um, and but yet it was. It was really interesting because I ended up in urgent care, um, and I said, "Hey, is lipedema in my chart?" And they said, "Yes, it is. It's right oh, here." No. And I said, "Do you know anything about it?" And he was like, "Um." Not much. And I'm like, so no, that's okay. I'll, <laughs> I'll teach you. I'll teach you. I got some information. Uh -huh. And, you know, so, but, but the beauty of that is if we were able to get the, the postcards for our clinicians and, and, you know, keep them right there in our little, oh, uh, I'm going to say cargo <laughs> pant pocket or whatever we have on, right? Tuck it oh. in here. If we carry it with us and we say, hey, you know, do you have lipedema? written down in my, is it in my chart? Um, yes. What do you know about it? And if they don't know anything, you can, you can give them the postcard and say, Oh, look, I know something about it. And I would like you to find out about it because you're part of my care team. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the, um, uh, I don't actually have the link pulled up ready for the, for the postcard. Um, okay. But, and I think that, and we need to find that because I think that's important because one of the common things that people are posting is I just went to my doctor and I told, I wanted to get lipedema in my chart and, uh -huh. oh, and the doctor said, oh, you mean lymphedema. Right. And, and then they argue with you because they think you don't know what you're talking about. And so um, I, I, I'm wondering if you can... Um, give some tips and tricks on, on how to deal with that when our, when our doctors, they don't know about lipedema and they want to either say that, oh no, you have lymphedema, that's what you mean, or they, they think of lipidemia or 
blood yeah. lipids. Right, like hyperlipidemia. Yeah, yeah. And so we need to have uh, good ways of clarifying that with our doctor that hopefully doesn't antagonize them, but gets them on our team. <laughs> right. Um, so I think one of the best things that we can do is educate ourselves. So we find, okay, how do I pronounce this? And in the United States, it's pronounced lipedema. Mm -hmm. Right now, it might be pronounced different in Europe. I think they, call, they have an O in it. Learn how to spell it. Write it down. Because if you walk in and you go, oh, I've got lipe lipidemia, right then, you're, yeah. you don't, you're not showing that you are confident enough to explain. So the first thing to do, learn how to spell it and learn how to pronounce it. Mm -hmm. Be aware you might have lipolymphedema, which is an advanced stage. And so educate yourself, write it down, have a, have a little three by five note card. Mm -hmm. And when he says, oh, you mean lymphedema, pull it out and say, um, no, I mean lipedema. Can you look it up here? Spell it this way. Because they're all in there on their little computers and they can yes. look at it real quick, right? Yes. Yes. And so you're like, huh, I thought the person said I had lipedema. Can we, can you, will you look that up for me? Here's how you spell it. And let's discuss it because you're part of my care yes. team. Yes. And I, and I'm trusting that you're going to be part of my care team. And, and so I can become more informed. The, the problem is, is we can't very well walk in and say, I know I got this. Listen up, doc. Yes. Because the first thing they do is go, well, who are you to, you know, yeah. where's your medical degree kind of thing. Right. So they get all, you know, so it's kind of like you, you almost have to play the innocent to start yeah. until you can open up the conversation. Right. Yeah. Um, know, point. Yeah. Know the difference between lipedema and lymphedema. And we do have that, that um, ebook on that. Yes. Correct. We have a yes. guide. The, the yeah. lymphedema, right, the guide. And Winetta makes an excellent suggestion to print out the U.S. standard of care for uh, lipedema in the U.S. And there are standards of care for some other countries if you're not in the U.S. Um, there's several, there's one for as a Dutch guidelines, there's German guidelines. Uh, I think there's even Italian guidelines. So depending where you are in the world, uh, Sweden, I think, has one. So, um, but Print that out because it is written by, um, you know, there's physicians on the list of all the authors. And so, and a lot of times your doctors trust information coming from other doctors better. Um, they're not, your doctors are not all like our Dr. Matthew Carmody, who believes that the patient has all the wisdom. <laughs> it has a greater part of the wisdom and that it's a collaboration with their physician. And so like Gail says, we have to um, sometimes go there as, as we're naive and we're trying to learn more and, um, and we're seeking their advice and their help and not right. coming in with our diagnosis already. Right. And, and another thing that I, I'm, a, maybe it's because of who I am and how I talk to people as a teacher. And, and I like to, I, I do like to play silly sometimes like, oh, I'm, a, I'm much, I, I know a lot less than I do kind of thing. <laughs> but if you have the printed out standard of care, something like that, if it's printed out and you, you can say, you know, I was reading this, can, can you help explain some of this stuff to me? Mm -hmm. You know, and and can I go, can we go over this? Can, can I scoot over close to you and we'll look at this right here on your little tabletop? And can you mm -hmm. help me understand this and get your highlighter out, you know, and mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of like you want information from them. And mm -hmm. that kind of might put them on the spot, but the person who's willing to learn is going to go, oh, let's take a look at that. Oh, you do. That, that is your skin quality that you do have those ankle cuffs So you have complained about pain and, you know, so, so mm -hmm. it's like, okay, this is what I thought I was dealing with. I'm so glad that you're, that, that you are, I'm affirming that I'm dealing with lipedema. Can I get that in my chart? 
Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. I, I'm, I'm hoping kind of that this, this is a, a, a you know example of how to discuss it with your doctor. And so, and I, I know that Gail, you've probably done this many times. Um, so um, I hope that this is helpful to people on how you can talk to your doctor about it. And even if we don't have that official diagnosis code, you still can get the word lipidema in your chart. Um, and the more it's in there, the more that it's uh, particularly in if you're a part of a big hospital system, like if you're part of Kaiser, one of those big, you know, things where all of your care providers are all linked, then insurance carriers start seeing the word more and more and more. And then that can help drive getting us the, the proper codes. Yeah. Now I'm, I, I don't know. I'm thinking, I'm thinking this could be pretty silly. This is what happened to me. Doctors, MA put it into my chart as lipid edema instead of lip edema. And in my head, I read they gave you lip edema, like your lips. Well, swollen lips. Yeah. <laughs> but I realized, what, I'm like, what? <laughs> lip but edema. yes, this is, this is very common. They put it down as a, with L I P I D E M A yeah. because they think that you have like high blood cholesterol or something. Right. Um, and so they are, are misinterpreting it. That's why bringing in something like our postcard or an article about it. So it has the proper spelling. It has the definition of it. Every single paper that gets published on lipedema, the first couple paragraphs are just a definition of the condition. Um, so, you know, if you bring in practically any article about lipedema, it's going to have that definition there which incidentally is um, when you really get into studying lipedema, it's not well agreed upon. <laughs> and so uh, that's another thing we're doing at Lipedema Project and Lipedema Simplified. We're trying to get an agreed upon definition of lipedema, but any article will have a general, you know, this is a bona fide condition. This is basically the symptoms and characteristics of it. And so, uh, you know, that will, it'll bring your, your physician, your healthcare provider on board. Um, and Andrea asks, um, let's see, um, we had a couple things, um, but she's asking about how to get the ebook. Do you know, Gail? <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, that has to be somewhere on our website. I would I'm, think. I'm, I'm looking over here at Catherine in our background. I'm going, Catherine. <laughs> um, Hi, it's on our website, yes? No, how do we get the ebooks? <laughs> I can't hear you, hon. <laughs> um, so <laughs> it's okay, Catherine. Now that is that is a perk of being a member of our tribe because every ebook we have, we have an ebook that's just about why MLD, manual lymph drainage for lipedema. We have one about just the, describing the characteristics and symptoms of lipedema. Um, so we have all, we have a, an ebook, uh, more like a pamphlet about how to get blood pressure that hopefully doesn't hurt so much. So we have a lot of uh, publications and stuff like that um, for uh, people with lipedema. So, um, and if you have any questions like that and you want to make the connection, my uh, um, email address is gail at lipedema-simplified.org. And you can just send that, that question to me and uh, about making connections. Um, but do go into our website, um, which is lipedema-simplified.org. Look at our website, dig around in there. And um, there's a, there are a lot of resources and then reach out to me and I'll help you find more. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Andrea, I gave a little clarification to her question about uh, compression, um, different from socks. She said she has worn uh, semi custom compression socks. I'm not sure what semi custom is, but um, she found them uncomfortable and painful. And so you are right not to wear those, Andrea, because your garments should not hurt you in that pain is telling you something that's not right. 
Um, and I heard someone talk about quilted or cotton to wear with my lymphopress. Well, yes, you could use that with your lymphopress pump, but there's also, um, uh, well, the, the, typically the quilted garments, they're, they're kind of thick and they're usually meant more to sleep in than they are for day wear because they're kind of bulky for day wear. So I'm just thinking for you that either I would do full custom flat knit because that's suited exactly to your measurements and would be less likely to sink into any little folds or anything you have like that, creases or anything. It would be, it would be much more comfortable because it's fitted exactly to you. And, or I would look at some of the Velcro compression garments and your um, certified lymphatic therapist is going to be your best resource to help guide you on what is going to be good for, you know, your specific situation. Yeah. And I can, I can tell you that wearing garments that do not fit you properly, that hurt, that pinch, that, that um, cause tourniquet, tur the tourniquet effect. Yes. That um, bunch in places that you can't get adjusted right that can cause problems yes. and and i have had i have had the issue where when it binds in around the you know socks that come up that go into the that little just below the knee just just below the yeah in yeah. the middle of the knee just below the bigger thighs and just yes. above the bigger calf that little bunchy spot yes. and they dug in and they were actually prescribed to me way before i knew i had lipedema so they were they were prescribed to me in 2006, uh -huh. in the spring of 2006, for venous issues. And by the, the fall of 2006, I was on a table getting greater saphenous vein laser ablation because it blew out all the veins around my knees. Uh, the the valves mm -hmm. and I was a mess yeah. and so one doctor prescribed me these these socks and because of oh, this is crazy because of my foot size because I am not a little girl I'm not huge you know like I'm not I'm not six foot five or ten or whatever I'm I'm five nine but my I wear a size twelve shoe and I the socks, the, I mean, they were actually like knee socks, right? The socks that were built for ladies' feet um, were too short and they were binding my toes. So they gave me men's socks. Uh -huh. and as we all know, men's calves are not lipedema calves. Mm -hmm. right? It's a different shape. It's a totally different shape, yes. but it fit my foot without making my toenails push back up into my, my feet, right? Yeah. I mean, yes. They were miserable. Yes. And so they, they didn't custom fit my socks. And then of course they were too long. So, yeah. so the foot was right, but they were too narrow and too long. And what happened yeah. is they just bunched right there Yes. And um, so this is um, this is this speaks to that um, it what you really needed was a custom. And um, Andrea asked okay. to give the name of the garments and she said the cotton garments. I'm not really aware of cotton that is used for compression. But if you're talking about the flat knit custom, um, I've used Jobst Alvarex and uh, um, and uh, Jobst Confidence is a custom that's very good for um, lipedema as well as um, a lot of the companies like Medi has a flat knit custom, Juzo has a flat knit custom. And if you're thinking about the Velcro products, I really like the uh, Loman and Rauscher, or sometimes it's just called L and R, <laughs> because it's hard to spell Loman and Rauscher. Um, they have a red um, Velcro garment that's really good. Um, so, but we've done it again. We've gone 50. Yeah, so we're at a full, um, almost 35 minutes. And 
it looks to me like less than are you locked up or am I? I, 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 I was gone for a second, but now I'm back. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that's what happens if we go over our time limit. It just, the, the internet just shuts down. <laughs> no more. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so thank you everybody for being here today. And we are going to be back again next Friday, once again, to talk to you about what's new and coming up. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Thank you, everybody.